thank you, thank you, thank you very much, um, thank you very much, Lenny. Um, what w we we looked at the various risks of of localizing and not localizing aid, and we tried to unbundle um, these risks and look at the trade-off between the fiduciary risk, the risk that money goes astray, um, as opposed to achieving development results, which is on the on the right, the axis on the right, and getting a strategic impact, which is all the non-development objectives of foreign aid, whether it's their political um, security and so on. And then, of course, um, the cost, which is, if you like, the inverse of value for money, uh, uh, that's the other trade-off, because some instruments um, may cost a lot of money, but have low risk. But what, what I think most, not, perhaps not donors, the politicians that they're accountable to want is something on this, you see on this scale, that, in the, that, that, that it's bi biased towards the northeast quadrant, getting high strategic impacts, high development effectiveness, low f fiduciary risk, and, and high value for money or, 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 or low cost. That's what um, I think the myth is of what non-localized aid is about. The reality, though, is is perhaps somewhat different, and I would caution that this is very country uh, context specific, and it also depends on precisely what kind of localized and non-localized aid instrument is we compared to in the study. So what you what we may see in 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 reality is 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 rather mediocre development results, not much strategic strategic impact. Um, fairly high costs and still a significant um, fiduciary risk, uh, even with non-localized aid. Now, comparing non-localized aid with localized aid, you might get something like this. The fiduciary risk is a bit higher, and mitigation can reduce it um, from something that would be even higher, higher still. Um, strategic and development impacts um, are po probably greater and the cost is probably less. So there are a number of trade-offs between results and between uh, risk, particularly fiduciary risks. And the private sector is very well aware of it. I mean, you know, a private um, a firm knows that you know the really big um, rewards are, are often in, in, in involve um, high risk. There's also a time element um, to this because uh, a lot of the development research over the past decade has shown that, um, th that, that institutional transformation lies at the heart of development, and this is a very long-term process, You're talking 10, 20, 20 years. Um, the reality in the um, donor countries is that, is that politicians want short-term immediate results, something to show their constituents. And, and, but the risk of, of, of non-localizing aid and, and uh, focusing on short-term risk is creating chronic aid dependency. Now that may still produce some institutional um, development, but we would argue that with localized aid, there may be a trade-off between short-term um, results and, and, and longer-term institution building, um, but with less um, aid, aid dependency. So there's a whole set of fairly complex uh, trade-offs, which, which are quite complicated to, to communicate. I've got two slides which I'm not going to go through in a lot of detail as about how an aid agency might do this. One is linking aid objectives with the constituencies within the donor country that support those objectives and might support the donor's um, agenda, particularly communicating trade-offs, avoiding doing harm, being frank about the time frame trade-offs, and, and presenting results on a portfolio rather than a project-by-project project basis. Be very frank about fiduciary risks and actively manage them, because reputational risks are often not that um, something was risky, but that the donor agency didn't respond promptly and decisively when a risk outcome occurred. And using research and the results of, of programs and projects to provide evidence to, to ground uh, policy. 
The last slide I have is looking more at the project program level where program design is clearly important. B designing a program to generate some short-term results that the, um, the, the, the donor's uh, authorizing environment might seek, but at the same time recognizing that long-term institutional development is really what development's about and is going to enable the country to stand on its own feet. Managing the constituencies within the country and the donor, a lot of that is about expectations, um, having and encouraging a realistic expect expectations of what can and cannot be done. And, and then um, finally, uh, proactively managing the risks to generate confidence that this aid agency knows its, um, knows its business. It's not that, that risks don't exist, and, and tolerance for risk certainly doesn't um, involve tolerance for risk outcomes, and when a risk outcome occurs, really have a plan for, for dealing with it um, promptly and transparency. And let me stop there. Thank you. Thank you. And I think all the presentations will be online following the event, so you can look in more detail at those slides. Chip Walker, can we come to you to have reflections on how you're taking forward some of this work within your agency?